Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas. We wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Good tidings we bring to you and your kin. Good tidings for Christmas and a Happy New Year. And welcome to our New Year's Day worship this morning. We're really glad that you've joined us online for this service. Um, we're going to hear from Catherine a little bit later and we're going to worship together. But first, let's pray. Father God, we thank you for the gift of this new year. We thank you that this is your year, as every year is uh, in your presence. And we give ourselves to you afresh uh, at the start of this year. God, may all that comes this year be held in your hands and that as we give ourselves afresh to you today, we would worship you with all that we are, uh, knowing that you are the God who has been with us since the beginning and you are the God who will journey through everything with us. And so let us continue in our worship this morning. Star and angel with the thumb Bouts you, babe, on bended knee The Savior of humanity Unto us a child is born
sing, death could not hold you, and death could not hold you. The veil saw before you, you silenced the bones of sin and grave. The heavens are roaring, the praise of your glory. just like to share a few verses from the beginning of John's Gospel, one of my favourite parts of the Bible. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being through him, and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness cannot overcome it. Are you the kind of person that once Christmas Day is over, you're into Boxing Day, it's like, right, decorations away, tree out of the house, tidy up, presents up where they belong, and back to normal. Is that you? Or are you the kind of person who likes to keep Christmas going as long as you can? Is Christmas neatly put away for you now? Or are you still living in the Christmas season? As we step across the threshold into this new year, 2023, believe it or not, it might seem as if carol singing and baby Jesus are a dim and distant memory. But I've actually been challenged over these last couple of weeks to think about what it means to not let go of Christmas. I've been challenged by uh, watching a film, actually. I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a minute. But I've got a quiz for you, a Christmas quiz. It's Christmas films. Do you know where these quotes come from? Some of them are easier than others. Here we go. Bless this highly nutritious, microwavable macaroni and cheese dinner and the people who sold it on sale. Amen. That is from Home Alone. Next one. Every time a bell rings, an angel gets his wings. Do you know? It's from It's a Wonderful Life. Here's another one. A little bit trickier, I think. It's Christmas Eve, and we are going to go celebrate being young and being alive. It's from one of my favorite Christmas films, The Holiday. How about this one? A bit of a controversial one for us. Some people think it's a Christmas film, others definitely don't. Now I have a machine gun. Ho, ho, ho. That's from Die Hard. How about this one? 
Christmas isn't just a day, it's a frame of mind. That's Chris Kringle in Miracle on 34th Street. And then the last one, the one that's challenged me this year actually, is this. I will honour Christmas in my heart and try to keep it all the year. And that, of course, is Ebenezer Scrooge from A Christmas Carol. What does it look like? What would it look like to travel into the new year, honouring Christmas in our hearts, the words of Scrooge, or recognising Christmas is a frame of mind in the words of Chris Kringle? What does it mean to keep Christmas all the year? Well, as I've been doing a bit of thinking and reflecting around that, I found myself going back to the first sermon I preached this last Advent. It was at the end of November. And I was reflecting on why we think people are putting their Christmas decorations and lights up earlier and earlier, year after year. And I remember thinking, maybe it's because... People are just desperate for something more, something different, something else. And for me, the answer to all of this longing is Jesus Christ. And so I encouraged us back at the end of November to get the lights out, to put them up, to let them light the darkness around us, to recognize this gift of Jesus, the light of the world shining in the darkness. And as John's gospel reminds us, the darkness can never extinguish the light of Jesus Christ. That is good news. Emmanuel, God is with us, lighting up the darkness around. How amazing is that? A church leader I know of went recently to a charcoal drawing workshop. And she said this about it. We were given a picture of a veiled woman from the Old Testament to copy. The artist who was leading the day promised to talk us through every step of the way. But I confess that I was really surprised, she says, when his first instruction was to cover the entire sheet of paper in thick black charcoal. I'd expected that I'd be asked to draw the outlines of the image of the woman and to start and put some shade in there. But here I was, faced with a smudgy charcoal page. And so instead of drawing the dark onto the light, we used a charcoal rubber to draw the light out of the dark. In other words, we had to bring out the light do you know, that speaks deeply to me about what it means to honor Christmas and to allow Christmas to become a frame of mind. What I mean by that is that we become discontent with living in the darkness. And we become those who continually seek to find the light, to carry the light, to bring out the light. Sometimes I think we can get so used to darkness that we miss, we even miss the offer of the light. Charles Dickens also wrote this in A Christmas Carol. Darkness is cheap and Scrooge liked it. We are called to be children of the light, not of the darkness. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 8 sees Paul encouraging the early church in their call to live as children of the light, it says. Live as children of the light. That was a challenge to the early church and it's a challenge to the church today as well, to you and me today, to us together. I wonder if you listened to the king's speech last week. The first king's speech since George VI did his last speech 
on Christmas Day in 1951. And he has a famous speech from earlier that includes a, a poem by Minnie Louise Haskins. Many of you will know this poem very well. It's so beautiful. I'm just going to share a few words of it. Very poignant for this time of year. And I said to the man who stood at the gate of the year, give me a light that I may tread safely into the unknown. And he replied, go out into the darkness and put your hand into the hand of God. That shall be to you better than light and safer than a known way. So I went forth and finding the hand of God, trod gladly into the night. Isn't it profound that sometimes the reality of our lives teaches us that light and beauty can actually emerge from darkness. A bit like the charcoal drawing I spoke of earlier. Where darkness doesn't overcome the light because it never will. John chapter 1 reminds us of that truth very clearly. Just as we celebrated the light of Christ coming into the world's darkness at Christmas in Jesus, so we celebrate his light in us and with us as we move into a new year. And we start from where we are with all of our light and our dark, with all of the shade within our own lives and our own experience, with all of our smudges. And sometimes all we can do is consciously choose to put our hand into the hand of God. What an amazing invitation that is for us though. What an amazing choice for us to make that even amidst the darkness, we can find ourselves open to God, drawing the light out in us. And we are enhanced and we are illuminated and we are able to reflect his light into the world around us too. That is so important that we reflect the light of Christ. So, friends, we have a choice to make here. And my encouragement to you and to me at the start of this new year, 2023, is to choose to journey through this year with Christmas as a frame of mind to be those who honour Christmas in our hearts and try to keep it all the year, to go out into the darkness and put our hand into the hand of God, knowing that that shall be to us better than light and safer than a known way. For as we put our hand into the hand of God, then God's light is already there, part of us, God's gift to us. So we go forth and we find the hand of God and we tread gladly into the night. Hold on tight is my encouragement to you this year. Hold on tight to God, the only true and lasting light bringer. The one who was and is and is to come in Jesus Christ, the one whose light can never, ever be extinguished. This is our God. And I can't tell you how glad I am that I enter 2023 with the assurance that God is already here. So hold on tight. Hold on tight to God and don't let go. Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you for the truth of your word that reminds us that your light shines in the darkness and the darkness can never extinguish that light. Jesus Christ, you are our light. 
and so at the threshold of this new year, we reach out our hand and we take hold of your hand. We tread into this new year. We walk into this new year, the known and the unknown, with the assurance of you leading and guiding us. And we thank you. We thank you, O oh God, for the blessing of knowing that you are the one who is walking with us as we walk with you. So, Lord, we pray that you would help us to be those who walk with you faithfully into this coming year, that we might know your light within us and that we might reflect that light to others. Help us, O oh God, to know Christmas as a frame of mind and to keep Christmas through this coming year and all to your glory. In the name of Christ we pray. Amen. And in the darkness we were waiting without hope and without light so from heaven you came running there was mercy in your eyes to fulfill the law and prophets to a virgin came the world from a throne of endless glory to a cradle in the dirt
for joining us for our New Year's Day worship this morning. It's been great to have you with us. Uh, and thank you to Catherine for sharing God's word with us. We're going to share in the words of the grace together. And hopefully we'll see you later this year, maybe in person, maybe online, uh, but as part of our church family. Let's join together with the words of the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs> 